Hello Grade 10s, we'll be looking at some circuits or electricity past paper questions. Stay tuned throughout the whole video, I give teacher tips, I tell you where students often go wrong and how you can get the best marks possible in this question. So, here's the circuit behind me. We always in Grade 10 consider that the battery has no internal resistance. That's why that top sentence there says, conducting wise battery negligible resistance. They give me the reading of the voltmeter across the battery, 24 volts. Think of this as sort of like the total voltage of the circuit, the total potential difference. Then they give me a 24 ohm and an 8 ohm resistor. These are connected in parallel and we've got a 2 ohm resistor connected in series. Now before we get into the questions, I want to make sure that you understand how to know when something is connected in series and when it's connected in parallel. So we start at the battery. The total current will flow through the battery. The total current will flow through the 2 ohm. And can you see over here, the line splits? Okay, there's a little divide here. Some of the current will flow through the 24 ohm. And the rest of the current will flow through the 8 ohm resistor. What this means is that the 24 ohm and the 8 ohm resistor are in parallel. Then when they come back together over here the total current will continue flowing throughout the circuit obviously as long as the switch is closed so this means that the 2 ohm is in series with the battery and that the 24 ohm is in parallel or connected in parallel with the 8 ohm now remember the following current is the same in a series circuit so we just discussed that same 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 all along the series part of the circuit and current splits in parallel. So some of the current goes through here, some of the current goes through here. Then the voltage splits in series, but is the same in parallel. What this means, according to this circuit behind me over here, is that the total voltage of the circuit, 24 volts, it will split in series. Now what that means is that some of the voltage will go to the two ohm resistor over here, and the rest will go to this parallel combination over here because essentially what is happening is the series circuit, the series resistor, the 2 ohm, is connected technically in series with the parallel combination. So the 24 ohm splits up as follows. Some of it goes here, the remaining voltage goes here. However, for the 24 ohm and the 8 ohm, because they're in parallel, they'll have the same voltage. So let's pretend the voltage across this voltmeter here was 10 volts. What that means, and this is obviously not true values, we'll um, calculate true values now in a second, but just pretend. So pretend 24 is the total, 10 volts goes over here to the two ohms. That means the voltage that goes to this parallel part is 24 minus 10, which is 14 volts. And what that means is that the top resistor gets 14 volts, and the bottom resistor gets 14 volts because they're in parallel. I hope that makes sense. Let's go to these questions. This, the first question says define the term resistance and it is two marks. It's a definition. This is supposed to be easy marks in your science paper. You must just study the definition. It is the ratio of the potential difference across the resistor to the current in the resistor. And this makes sense if you think of the formula to calculate resistance. It's V over I. It's a ratio of the potential difference to the current. The next question wants me to calculate the total resistance of the circuit. Now, remember, when calculating total resistance, you need to first calculate the resistance or the overall or effective resistance of any resistors connected in parallel. So we ignore everything else for now and we just focus on the parallel combination. So we need to use the formula to calculate resistance in parallel. We have two resistors connected in parallel. We use the following formula. This one over here, one over RP, one over R1 plus one over R2. We stop there. I know it says dot, 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 but we only have two branches. So R1 is the top branch, R2, bottom branch. I just realized that the first question is just, just to calculate the equivalent resistance. Also, they can say um, effective resistance the equivalent resistance of the resistors connected in parallel. So we have to ignore this one here, connected in series. Block it out. We're only focusing on these two over here. 
So it's 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. This is a formula, and you get a formula mark for writing that. Then it's 1 over 24 plus 1 over 8. And you take your calculator and you work out what that is equal to. So my calculator says that it is equal to 1 over 6. So we write 1 over RP is equal to 1 over 6. But remember, we want the effective resistance of the resistors connected in parallel. So what we essentially want isn't 1 over RP. We just want RP. So what this means is we basically have to flip this fraction over. And because we're flipping the left-hand side, we have to flip the right hand side. So it's going to be 6 over 1, which is basically 6 ohms. So where do you get your marks? Formula, substitution, answer with unit. If you don't put your unit, you don't get your answer mark. Then in the next question, they want the total resistance of the circuit. So what we just worked out at the moment was that the parallel resistance has an equivalent resistance of 6 ohms. What this means is basically I could replace both of these connected in parallel with a single resistor that has a resistance of 6 ohms and it would be the same thing. It means that overall this part of the circuit has a resistance of 6 ohms. Okay, It is broken up, it's 24 ohms and 8 ohms, but overall the resistance of this part of the circuit is 6 ohms. To get the total resistance we need to add the parallel part plus this one connected in series. And the reason why is because the 2 ohm and the parallel connection, those are technically, technically connected in series. So it's basically like using this formula over here, where R1 is the one connected in series, and R2 is basically like the parallel part. So I have RT, R total, is the 2 ohms, this one, plus this parallel combination, 6 ohms, and we get 8 Ohms. Again, if you don't put your unit, you don't get your answer mark. 9.3 says that when the switch is closed and current is flowing through the circuit, the voltmeter connected across the 2 ohm, so this voltmeter over here, which is just reading the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor, measures 6 volts. And what they want us to do now is to determine the potential difference or the voltage reading across the parallel combination. Now, on the diagram, they aren't drawing a voltmeter that is across the parallel combination but effectively it would look something like this either you could draw it across just the 24 or you could draw it across just the 8 or you could draw it connected across both of them it doesn't matter because whatever this voltmeter reads will be the same as this voltmeter and the same as this voltmeter because they're they're connected in parallel so basically what we're doing is we have the total voltage 24 and as i mentioned earlier in this video that splits between the series resistor, which we know now gets 6 volts. The parallel combination gets the leftover volts. So therefore, 24 minus 6, that will get me the voltmeter reading across the parallel combination. And that is 18 volts. Now again, remember what that means is technically the parallel combination. So overall, if I connect a voltmeter here, it'll measure 18 but if I connect a voltmeter just across the 24 volts, it'll also measure 18. If I connect a voltmeter just across the 8 ohms, it will also measure 18 because voltage is the same in parallel. 9.4 says a charge of 18C. Now, 18C means 18 coulombs. Charge is Q. So a charge of 18 coulombs flows through the battery in 6 seconds. That is time. So they're giving me time, they gave me charge. Calculate the current in the 2 ohm resistor. So they want the current, current is I, they want the current across the 2 ohm resistor. Now, there's actually two ways to do this. We can either use the information given to me in this question to do this calculation, which I will do now, or we can use other information that we already know to calculate the answer in this question, which I'll do in a minute. So a charge of 18 coulombs, we know. Charge is 18, we know. Time is in seconds. If I know Q and if I know T, take a look at this formula over here. If I know Q, this one over here, and I know T, I can calculate I, which is current. So we write our formula, and our formula can be written as follows. Q is equal to I times T. That is how they give it to me on the formula sheet, so that's how I'm writing it. Q is 18. So in the place of Q, put 18. I is what I'm looking for. 
and time is 6. So 6 over there. I is therefore 18 divided by 6, which is 3 amperes. That's one way to get the answer. And you might be thinking, but wait, they said that charge, 18 coulombs, flows through the battery. How can we use the battery to help us calculate the current through the resistor? Remember, the total current flows through the battery will also flow through the 2 ohm resistor because that resistor is in series. So yes, this 3 amperes that we calculated is technically the current that is flowing through the battery, but it's also the current that's flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. Now, the other way to get to this answer would be to use Ohm's law, which is we're looking for current. It's I is equal to V over R, which comes from the formula V equals I times R. I'm sure you know that formula. V equals I times R or I is equal to V over R. We know the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor. So they want the current through this resistor. So we're looking for I. We know the voltage. We know the potential difference across that resistor. They gave it to us in the previous question. They said it was 6. So this is 6. And we know the resistance is 2. So 6 divided by 2, 3 amperes. Same answer. It doesn't matter how you get to the answer. You get your marks for formula, substitution, answer, or formula, substitution, answer. And please don't write your unit as amps. Amps is not the correct um, accepted unit. It's either A or amperes. Just a note, a side note, because a lot of students do that wrong and they lose that mark. I hope that this has been a helpful video. Please check out the links in the description box below for more exam practice videos, more electricity videos, and just physics, chemistry, maths in general. Can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.